In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to render with multiple view layers, and then you can combine them together with Blender's compositor. So we first need to add a view layer. So right up here in the right top corner of Blender, there's gonna be the view layer settings. And on default, there's just one view layer. First, I'm gonna create a few different collections so I can show you what it does when we duplicate the view layers. So what I'm gonna do is select this teapot here, and I'll hit M to move. I'll click on new collection, and I'll just rename this to two, and then click on create, and then this collection here, I'll double click on this and then just rename this to one. So now we have one collection and then two collection. And then if I select the light and the camera, I want to bring these out of the collections. So I'll hit the M key to move and I'll just click on scene collection. So now we have one, which has the Suzanne head. We have two, which has the teapot. And then outside of the collections, we have the area and the camera. So what I'm going to do is just click on one here, click on that check mark there just to disable it. So what I'm now going to do is create another view layer. So to create another one, we're going to click on this button here. It looks like two pieces of paper. Now when you're adding a new view layer, there's three different settings. If I just click on new, then it's going to add a new view layer, but it's not going to copy any of the view layer specific settings. So because we just clicked on new, it unhid collection one. If I were to instead click on this button here and then click on copy settings, it would now add a new view layer, but you can see the settings are going to be the same. So collection one is going to be hidden. Or if I click on this button to add a new layer and I choose blank, it is going to hide all of the collections. So for me personally, I usually just like to choose the copy settings, so I'll just click on copy settings. So now here on the this view layer, I'm going to rename this to two, and then if I click here, I can click on the other view layer, and this one I'm just going to change to one. And then of course, if you want to delete any view layer, you can click on that exit button there to get rid of it. Now just to be very clear, the view layer settings are different from the scene settings. So if you were to make a new scene, if I were just to click on new and click on a new scene, it would just make a completely new blender scene and there wouldn't be any objects. So the view layers don't work the same as scenes, where scenes it's going to be a completely new scene and there's no objects. If I make a new view layer, it's still going to keep all the object settings. So for example, if I click on the teapot and I make this teapot red instead, now if I change the view layer to view layer 2, the teapot is still going to be red. Or if I go into edit mode of the teapot and I delete the top of the teapot, then if I go to the other view layer, you can see that setting is still going to be applied. So now what I want to do is have one view layer render one object and the other one render the other object. So I'm going to choose view layer one, and then on this one, I will hide layer two. So that way it's only going to render the Suzanne, which is in the one collection. Then if I change this over to two, for two, I'm going to disable one. So in two, it's only going to render the teapot because the teapot is in collection two. Now you can see the area light and the camera are both out of the scene collections. So if I change this, the area light and the camera are going to render in both of the scene collections. So that's very useful if you have maybe an object that you want to render in both view layers, or if you want both view layers to use the same lighting, you just need to make sure that the lights or the cameras or whatever you want to be in both layers are outside of these collections. So you can either keep them in the scene collection like I have here, or you can put them in a new collection. If I however only want wanted this light to render in one of the view layers, I could stick it in view layer one. And now if I go over to view layer two, you can see there isn't any light in view layer two because it's only in view layer one. Now I'm gonna wanna combine both of the render layers in the compositor after we render. So what I'm gonna do is click here on the render settings and I'm gonna open up this film tab and I'm gonna choose the transparent button. And that way both of them are gonna render with a transparent background. So I'll now hit F12 to render the image. You can see it's gonna render the first one and then you can see it renders the second one. And if you wanna preview view both of them, you can click on this drop down here and you can see here is view layer two and here is view layer one. So now let's click over here to go to Blender's compositor and we can do the compositing. So I'll click on use nodes. And then because I have the node wrangler enabled, I'll hold down the control and shift key and select the render layers to preview it. Now, right now we are just previewing one of the render layers. So if I click right here on this drop down, I can choose the second one instead. So what I'm gonna do is select the render layers. I'll duplicate it with shift D, drop it up here. And then if I click on this one, I can change it to the second one. So now I can preview both of these and we have the first one and the second one. So now to combine them, I can search for the alpha over node. Let's drop it here. And this image can go into the top one. And this image can go into the bottom one. And I can control shift and select the alpha over to preview it. And let's also put the image into the composite image. So now you can see that it's joining them both together. However, you can see that this teapot is actually behind the monkey. So if I want to switch that, I would need to put this image into the bottom one. And then this monkey into the top one. And now you can see that the teapot is above the monkey. So that's one example of where the render layers 
factors can be useful is you can switch the positions so one of them can be on top of another. Now this factor here is gonna add both of them. So if I turn the factor down, you can see it's just using the monkey, but then as I turn the factor up, it's gonna add more and more of the next one of the teapot. Now also you might want to add some sort of background. So if you want to add a background, I will duplicate this alpha over node, stick it here, and I can put the image up to the viewer image. And then this alpha over can go into the bottom one. So now the top one can be the background color. So I could maybe make this just like a dark blue. So now what's really useful about having both render layers is I can add different compositing effects to one or the other, and it won't affect the other render layer. So for example, I could search for like RGB curves, drop this here, and then I could drag this up and down. And so you can see I can color correct the teapot, but it's not going to affect the monkey. Another thing I could do is I could add like a blur, drop this here, and so I could blur this by turning up the blur values, and it's just gonna blur the teapot, but it's not gonna blur the monkey. I could also maybe add a glare and put the glare here down on the monkey layer, and then I could change the streaks to bloom instead, maybe turn down the threshold so it's a bit stronger. So now you can see the monkey has the bloom effect, but the teapot doesn't. I could also search for the transform node and I'll put the transform here after the teapot and now I could change the Y and that's going to move it around so I can move the teapot up here on the Y axis or I can move it here on the X axis. I can also use the angle to rotate it so it's going to rotate that view layer and I could also scale it if I want to but it's not going to affect the other view layer. So I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching and if you'd like to watch more Blender Quick Tips you can check out my Blender Quick Tips tutorial playlist link to that is in the description and if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel some great ways to do that are by checking out my Gumroad store and my Patreon page and the YouTube memberships links to those are in the description. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching.